name is Said Navab. Some of you already know me. I'm a career service coordinator at Clearwater Campus, and uh, as part of our mission to bring a lot of support, a lot of uh, uh, things that you guys need. Part of it is helping with you find a job. With that, I had the privilege to meet Miss Diane Phillips about almost a year ago. We asked her to just come and see us. She let me have the copy of this book before even it was published. So I had the privilege of reading it, knowing about it, learning about it. So I find it very useful. It's very similar to what we do, what we offer at college. And uh, we're looking forward to use that book. Without further ado, let me just uh, introduce Miss Diane Phillips. Over three decades of experience spanning the globe that includes working with Fortune 100 executives and corporations, a TV and radio series designed for personal uh, career achievements, and working with Nobel Prize winners, designing after-school programs, the school curriculum development, and author of 10 easy learning books. She's also an expert in personal and professional development of uh, executive leaders and their teams, driving impact, uh, out impactful outcomes and solutions. Uh, delivering this uh, Careers Expo workshop based on her co-authored book and course, Find Yourself and a Job in 30 Days, to further your uh, per, uh, personal career achievements and opportunities. So without further ado, I'll give you Miss Diane Phillips, so she takes off from here. Welcome. This is the start of the Careers Expo workshop. I'm Diane Phillips, and the way I was introduced is a different way that I'm going to introduce myself to you because finding yourself is step one in order to then promote yourself to other people. Do you agree? Good. Not if you do. If, 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 if your eyes are closed, I think I won't understand what's going on. We want to make sure that we're fully present, including me. So we're going to do a little exercise. Is that okay with you? All right, nod each time you've done an action I've asked you to do, all right? Start of exercise. The purpose of the exercise is to get you fully in the present, spirit, mind, body. Not thinking about dinner or a bill you have to pay and didn't or anything else, okay? Okay, good. If you don't understand me, let me know right away, all right? This is for you, it's not for me, I've already done this. Okay. Start of exercise. Notice me. Good. Thank you. Notice a person next to you. Good. Notice something red. Oh, you just, he just walked in. Notice this fellow over here. Move over a little bit, will you, so that we're, I can look at you more easily and you're not hiding in the shadow. Notice someone at a distance and welcome them. Good. Notice your pack. Good. Some of you haven't noticed it yet. Oh, good. I got that. Notice that there are papers in your pack, and in the back of the pack, there's, there are several sheets called notes. Take them out, and then nod. We're going to use them. They're yours. Everything about this workshop is yours. Nod when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Hold the pen in your hand. I'll wait. Okay, good. Notice someone that's holding a pen with a different hand than yours and nod at them. Very good. Notice the banner in the front of the room. Very good. Notice the banner in the back of the room. Do you have a workshop? Good, you ready to start? Yeah. Is there anyone that is not feeling in the present and ready to start this workshop? Raise your hand. Be honest. Okay, that's excellent. Start of workshop. I need you to give me feedback. This is not for me, this is for you. Everything I've done is for beautiful individuals like you and you are each unique and different in so many ways. There are a thousand different resources that will tell you how to write a resume. Do you agree? Good, thank you for nodding. Then I know you're here. Do you wanna know a little bit of a background on how this 
book course came about. There was a gentleman that I've known for about 25 years named Dr. Gerald Rainey. He is a natural dentist in Philadelphia, very, very trusted by three generations that come and see him. During the event where they're having their mouth filled with all kinds of stuff, they'll often tell him someone in their family needs a job and is having a difficult time with it. Do you know of anyone that needs a job and might think they're scarce? Raise your hand. Good. By the end of this course, and hopefully by the end of this workshop, your mind will be changed as it concerns you. Okay? So he came to me and said, we don't have any scarcity of jobs. We could do 10 things, and we have. How about getting together with me, and we each use our unique abilities and combine them to help others to feel that way? So the book, I agreed, and the book was started. My part is mostly the find yourself, appreciate yourself. Once you do, you can write a resume. That you could look up in any one of those thousand different resources. Do you agree? But if you can't or you don't feel confident about all the wonderful, unique abilities and approaches that you have that are different from anyone else, you're going to let yourself down. So my job and the book's job and the 10-part course, which it really is, is to have you feel certainty about your own uniqueness and then feel comfortable promoting it, OK? So you're going to give me feedback by the end of this workshop to tell me if you've moved in the right direction in any way, OK? Good, thanks. I appreciate your giving me feedback back there. Thank you. All right. So. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about myself as an introduction, all right? And you're going to listen, and I'm going to ask you, what are the common aspects? What is common about everything I'm going to tell you? So that you could say, OK, she does this, she does this, she does this. But then I'm going to ask you, there's some common ground there, that all of these things I do have in common. And then I'm going to tell you about my sister and how different we are and, and how unique she is. And then you might give me some feedback about those qualities that make her more her. And nothing wrong. It's all OK once you see your uniqueness. OK? So I like to create. I have endless ideas. I, you can ask me to come over to your home and design the living room, I'd probably have 15 ideas in five or six minutes. I don't have any shortage of ideas, especially if they have to do with helping someone or making them smile or benefiting their life in some way. So I like to be part of a team. I'm very fast with ideas. I'm very slow with mechanics. You wouldn't want to hire me as your secretary. But I don't mind that. I hire good people. I don't mess with that part because I'm too slow and I don't like it. Because I'm so fast and useful with my bright ideas. So that's a little about me. Can someone tell me a little synopsis of what? Oh, by the way, I love variety. I absolutely love it. So if you ask me to do something in this room, I'd probably change the colors of it 15 times. And have fun, you know? And you can pick the one you like. That's the kind of freedom I, I like everyone to have what they want in their own way. And I could design it. I wouldn't build it, I could design it. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about me that, you, that might pull all of these things together. Why don't you? That's right. One second. Where's that little traveling mic? Good. Um, I want everybody to hear you. You're very interested in what's going on around you. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. You're very helpful. 
Thank you. I like to be. That's why I'm here. Anybody else? You like changing some stuff and liking variety. Oh, I like to know that you are, I mean, do things fast. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Yes. I like fast. I like to be fast because it keeps me upbeat. Uh, you're organized yet creative at the same time. Thank you. That's very, very perceptive on your part. You can come up with the ideas in the blueprint. It's just you were describing how you're not like the carpenter. You don't actually want to build it. That's right. And you are extremely perceptive because when I went to college, I, I was an architecture major and I hated blueprints. So I hired people that like blueprints and they're very good blueprint makers. Uh, like all of us, you have strengths and weaknesses and you just like to focus on your strengths and leave all the weaknesses behind for someone else. Smarty. And that's what I want for you too. There's really not weaknesses. How many of you w can think about when you were young and you felt you could do anything you ever wanted with your life? Right. We all feel that way. And then something not under our control where we don't succeed and don't do a good job in helping us succeed, we narrow down that bowl of opportunities to a few handful of things that maybe we could succeed in. I want to open this door for you, and that's what our book is about. That's what this course is about. By the end of it, it, it as a matter of fact, in the book, in the course, there are about 2,000 career listed with some brief descriptions of them. And by the end of the book, you will see, by the end of the course, you'll see that your unique abilities will be welcomed in some division, in some area of every one of them. It's just up to you to choose the ones that you feel most affinity for, you're most drawn to. But not because somebody gave you the idea that you're, you should be limited in any way. Would you like me to tell you about my sister? She likes slow. You can't rush her to do anything. She likes to take her time and complete things. And she's very detailed oriented. She has such patience that she could take a 25,000 piece puzzle. Just imagine this whole table being filled with 25 pieces of a puzzle. And she could sit in front of it to me they all look like sky and clouds. Did you ever see a puzzle like that? To her, she could sit and look at every piece and be interested and patient in taking the time to put it together. And it'll be fun for her. It would drive me crazy. But that's her uniqueness, her patience. She loves children. She loves animals. She's a very patient teacher. She doesn't rush anybody. She thinks she has no imagination. She actually thinks that about herself. Somebody gave her the idea when she was very young, maybe when she was five or six, and she did an art project, and some authority or some person sitting next to her went, ew. You know what I mean? And then she said, I'm never going to draw again which happens. So not of her influence. She feels she can't imagine. So I have to fly into Philadelphia if she has furniture that she needs or she wants to redesign her bathroom because it gives her chronic headaches to try to imagine what something will look like that isn't materialized. So I have to do as much as I can to put it there for her. Because I, have a, I already have a bunch of ideas by the time I get in a showroom. I don't even need a showroom. Uh, and so you see the difference? Nothing wrong or right. It just, some of it is not, some have been taken away from us, from our bowl of cherries that we feel we have a million choices of when we're a kid. Not of our own doing. And part of this course, part of this book, is to open up the door. There are processes in the book after you found yourself and your unique abilities that will help you to remove unwanted feelings about yourself. And poof, they're gone. It's very much a self-help process. And that's what I want for each of you, OK?
Good. So tell me a little about my sister. She's a very detailed person, but uh, at the same time enjoying doing that, anything. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? What I want you to do next, uncross your legs, feel the back of your chair and the, the carpet. Stamp on it so I hear it. Come on. OK, thank you. Close your eyes. Make your body comfortable in your chair. Close your eyes. Very good. Thank you. Is your body comfortable? Say yes or no. Yes. Very good. Are you ready to start? Close your eyes. Thank you. Recall or imagine a time when you were really, really happy. Your body felt light as a feather. You were doing something you really, really enjoyed and you felt free. When you've done that, open your eyes and look at me. Thank you. Well, that's a good place to start. Now look on your notes page and write down what you were doing, how you felt, and anything else about that experience. Take your time. This isn't a test. Look at me and let me know when you're done, but be very quiet so other people have their opportunity, okay? Thank you. How did you feel in that experience? Tell me. How did I feel during this experience? Yeah. Um, like you said, like light as a feather, you don't have anything holding you back. You're just playing with your friends in your childhood neighborhood. You don't have a worry in the world. So. Right. No worry in the world, doing what you want to do, being yourself. That's our goal. Uh, I felt like my creativity was flowing, like, you know, like it was just like a rush of I'm actually doing this kind of, kind of feeling, you know. That's so cool. Anybody else? Okay, what we would like and the purpose of this course is for you to feel that way. That's life. That's you living life and at your best. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Good. So, I want you to take as long as you need to, and write down some more about yourself, your characteristics, your quality, your assets, what you like to do when you most feel that kind of freedom. Don't necessarily describe a job. Just describe your own qualities, the things that tie everything you do that you really like together, and then when you're done, look up, but make a quiet space for everyone so they, it's not a test. It's just a free experience. Do you agree that you, your own confidence in your own uniqueness is this first step to any future, whether it be in a relationship? or whether it be in a job. I don't like the word job as much as career. In fact, when we were thinking of the title, we thought, uh, find a job that fits you and nobody else that makes you happy all of the time and you keep interested in your whole life. But that was too long, so that's the way this came about. But that's really the title, you know? Okay, we'll continue. I'm gonna go around the room. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself in the way that you put down an introduction of yourself, okay? I'm going to start with the very first person in the room. Go ahead. It's okay to read it if you want. But if you're reading it, make it your own. You understand? Own it. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name's Sierra, and I enjoy being creative, but I feel like sometimes uh, society holds us back from what we really want to be doing. That's not part of an introduction of you. What we're going to work on that, that's chapter seven and six in the book. Okay. 
Um, I didn't mean to invalidate what you said. Uh -huh. Most people feel the way you do. That's one of the reasons. I, with uh, get, all the positives about yourself. I feel happy when I'm playing with animals or spending time with my family most times. And uh, I like being going outside and enjoying nature as well. Very cool. Everybody welcome her, please. Oh, come on. Welcome her. You're very welcome. Hi. I'm Brianna. Um, I love dogs. I have two of them. I like to, one of my favorite things is to take them to the park and just hang out there. Um, I like spending time with my family and being outdoors or just hanging out with my friends. And what are the common things about that that make it happy for you? Um, I don't feel that like people can be mean, but animals are never really mean unless you're trying to hurt them. And they're just, they just love you no matter what. So when they're around, you feel loved, I guess. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shortly, we'll talk about choosing your people that are supportive, like a dog, only, only a network of people. But first, you have to find yourself in order to find a network, right? Mm -hmm. OK. My name is Chiquita, and I'm working on my second career. I'm a very creative, artsy person. First. We wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> Um, um, I live life vicariously as a child. I think age is nothing but a number. In my former life, before I had the accident, I was a hairstylist. Um, I'm working on my second career, and I do jewelry, I paint, I, you name it, I do it. And you have fun, right? I have fun. I live life to the fullest, and I like to help other people to discover their fullest p potential. Hello, my name is Andrea. I'm from Italy, and uh, I'm a people's person. I like to help. Um, I love to talk and listen to people, and I have fun also solving those problems. This, I'm like this because it makes me happy, and it makes me feel accomplished, and I also um, lo I love to stay positive and happy because that's, that's the key of life. Hey. Welcome. Uh, hi, I'm Jaime. I'm a very uh, creative person, like most of us in here. Um, I like to have, I like to always be behind a camera, uh, especially when I'm doing my photography. Um, uh, I like to be, I like, I like being in groups. I like being part of a, a, a social kind of network. Um, so I like to be, you know, I like to be team building, team leading, uh, everything that comes with a, uh, with a responsibility with it. Excellent. Everybody, welcome him. It's good guy. I like to go ahead in life. And uh, like I said, don't follow what is not right. And also, almost every day, I look at the sea just to look at it. I love it. I, I feel very happy, very complete. And I uh, like to discover things. I like it. If I don't know, I like to go. Is it the place I don't know? I like to go. I don't. I don't. I don't know. And uh, always, I like to learn. That's excellent. Yes. Welcome her. I'm Rochelle. Um, kind of similar to you. I'm like really creative. I like to like move things around and like recreate. Like I don't know. I like seeing like doing kind of like a project and like seeing it come together and seeing the like finished result. So. So you could say I'm like really creative in a way, but yeah. That's great. And you, you're creative and then you like to see it done in yeah. the physical sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. You two ought to get together somehow. <laughs> Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome her. Excellent. Okay, my name is uh, Eduardo Cáceres. Um, I'm an international business major, um, from an international student as well from Honduras. Uh, I consider myself as a very a friendly and a going person, a people's person. Um, I enjoy helping others and realize that in order to be successful in life, you need to be able to help others in the way that you possibly can. And yeah. Welcome. Thank you. How do you help others if you're not able to respect yourself and feel good about yourself and your uniqueness? 
That has to be step one. Do you agree? That's why we're doing what we're doing. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, my name is La Perrier. Um, I'm a legal major. I'm pretty honest and straightforward, at times a little too blunt. <laughs> Who told you that? My mom. <laughs> There's a process that releases your mom from your mind, okay? You get um, that. Do you get that? Okay. I know. I, she asked me a question. I was a little too blunt. I should have just said no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, I'm really tolerable. Like, I don't really, like, if someone has a different faith for me, I always like to listen to their end of it because it's always interesting to see what someone else believes and why they believe it. If you knock it down before they even, like, tell you, you, you lose the opportunity to learn something new about another culture or another faith. Um, I, I'm not a people's person, actually. I, I don't really care too much for people, but I don't mind having conversations and I'm very approachable and friendly. Excellent. Welcome her. Sometimes you're next door to someone for 15 years and you don't even know their name. And we're getting to know each other in our heart, aren't we? Um, my name's Tanaya. I'm doing college early, so I'm only 16. So I'm getting my associate's degree when I graduate and I'm transferring to get my doctorate in pharmacy in either FAM or UF. Um, I'm very outgoing, I'm very friendly, I'm very motivated, like I'm getting a second job soon. I was like, oh, I do that, but you know, I push myself really hard, like I'll be up late and I'll continue to do stuff, I don't care what no one says, I want to be very successful at the end of the day, so. And that's your own determinism, right? It's not yeah. anybody forcing you. No. So cool, welcome her. Hi, my name is Brittany and my major is special education. I just love helping other people because when I was little, people helped me, so I want to give back to my community. That is so cool. My major was special ed, too. Hi, uh, my name is Mary Natar. Um, I'm not a people's person like Perry right there, um, but I like to help everyone in any way that I could possibly do. Um, it makes me happy when anyone around me is happy, just pretty much happiness is contagious. But then if anyone is negative, it just, you know, you just tolerate it and then just make things positive. Um, what else? I'm very shy in a way, but if you get to know me more, it's opposite. Just, just, just letting you know. Thank you. Do we feel like we know her? You're wonderful. Thank you. The last communication that you gave, Mary, led us to the next step in our workshop which is kind of interesting that that happened. Because, okay, you, you have to know something about yourself. And as you travel through the adventure of this 10-part course or book, you'll find more about yourself to appreciate. And you'll be able to let go of some of the ideas that weren't yours originally that you didn't feel you could defend yourself against. And shine like a diamond. But part of it, once you found yourself, is using tools that we provide in order to know who to choose, how to choose your people, who to invite into your network, and who to avoid. Those tools are not only on this course, but we're going to get a taste of it today. And Mr. Benavides has volunteered, I volunteered him actually, to role play so that we could do the next part, which is how to choose your people, who to invite, and who to avoid. It's not a personal thing as much as it is habitual characteristics in a person that make you feel good when you're around them, or habitual characteristics in a person that make you want to avoid them or upset you. And it's habitual. Sometimes I wake up and I'm not as happy as other days. Do you ever have those? Yeah. But I don't habitually put myself down. I don't habitually wish I didn't wake up in the morning. So these characteristics are habitual that may be within your mind that affect you negatively, which you will learn to avoid or 
those negative characteristics habitually that keep coming up that you want to gently avoid or change the subject when you're around people that do that and make you feel bad. Got it? So in your pack, there's a list called invite or avoid. Take it out and look at me when you're ready. OK. We're going to start out with characteristics that are habitual to avoid. We will go over two or three of them. And then you're going to, you're going to play a game, OK? So that you really understand them. Now, people that have characteristics, or even you, that have characteristics that put yourself or another idea other than your own down, should be avoided. And instead of killing yourself off or making yourself feel terrible, just notice it. These are just to be noticed. How do you avoid someone or an idea like that? Well, if it's habitual, instead of arguing with them, instead of putting them down or being critical, which you may want to do because it doesn't seem very just in the way you're being treated, Arguing with them is a little like arguing with an answering machine. It doesn't change if it's habitual. Do you agree? Not. Anybody disagree with that? OK. It might feel better to argue, but it just takes more time than you really want to. And we've discovered that over many years. So it's how not to waste your time and how to focus on the positives for yourself to enrich your own viewpoint and your own life, OK? But in the meantime, we're going to role play. What's going to happen is Mr. Bonavides is going to say something about himself just the way you wrote something down. I like to blah, blah, blah. You got what your idea is that you're going to tell me? Okay. To an extent, yeah. I'm going to then demonstrate or role play something that to be avoided by him. He'll either change the subject gently or get out of the conversation in a way that's not going to be upsetting. OK? You understand the game? OK. Good. Ready? Start. Tell me something. Dan, I, uh, I love to help people. And today we're having uh, such a great day that I'm so happy to see that the students are on site. This is all about careers, and this is my passion. I love, I live, I breathe this. I don't know what to tell you. I, I really, really love this. Are you really being honest with me? I am being so genuine right now. I don't even know. <laughs> really? All right, well, how much more genuine do I need to be? You're okay. just doing this for the group. For the group, no. Handle me. OK, go ahead. Handle me. Well, what are you going to, how are you going to avoid going any further? Do you feel good, by the way, by what no, I said? Of course not. Right. Does no. anybody feel good by the not. way I handled him? No. Objection's okay. not nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to continue going on when a person is putting you down like that? No. Good. Handle me. Avoid me. Okay. Well, you know what? I, my time's exhausted, and I actually have another meeting, and I have to go. So maybe we can get together a little later if you'd like, but I okay. really have to go. OK. How do you do? Good. I wouldn't get together with me if I were you. Do you agree? <laughs> Would you like to get together with a person that chronically does that? OK. Tell me. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a poor listener in some way, OK? Poor listener. Tell me about yourself. I love to paint. I oh, love. come on. I saw one of your paintings. Just the other day, I painted something nice for you. No, you didn't see me running. I was running down again. You know what? Craft. I don't like the lights in here. Uh, there, do you like the lights in here? I love the lights in here. They're uh, nice and bright. OK, that's it for a second. <laughs> You're being too nice. OK. OK. It's not that you should argue with me, but let me know immediately how you feel. Okay. And just tell me, 
Did you feel good when no. I did what I did? Was I a good listener to you? No, you were not. All right, now handle me. Okay. Handle me per this drill. So. I'm waiting for you, come on. I know, you put you on the spot here. <laughs> come on. So, if you're saying, okay. Are you gonna stay in this conversation? Of you're gonna leave. Not, yeah. Okay, you do it, I'll, we'll switch roles. Is that okay, okay with ahead. you guys? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something about me. You be a poor listener and I'll handle you, okay? okay. All right. I've created shoes like that. I actually, and socks like that too. They're fantastic. Shoes? You're not listening to me. <laughs> you like the shoes? Well, you know what? I really like those. I love them, and you're inspiring me. So I'm going to go home and design some more. Good to meet you. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Did I upset you? No. Good. Not one second. Right. You get it? Yeah. OK. All right, I'm going to do something, and it lies or distorts the truth habitually. Do any of you know people like that? Make things that are bad worse, or make things that are good not so bad, so, so good, or exaggerates a lot? Okay. Ready? And, and I'm going to lie, and you handle me, okay? Sure. I did a workshop today. I had at least a thousand people there. They were, I mean, they rushed to buy our books and they couldn't wait to start. And it was so exciting. I got to know people in two seconds like never before, but I think I should be hired instead of you actually because I just see better results. You know what I mean? It just, I think I could do a better job. You know, that's amazing, but um, I have a meeting that I have to go to and... Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you want to run away, don't you? <laughs> Didn't you feel that too? And I wasn't even as mean as I could be. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do gossipy. Um, Mostly negative. You know, gossip isn't sharing news. It's, it's this. Did you hear about Mr. Nawab? No, I didn't. He took off in the middle of a workshop so that he could have a hamburger. <laughs> they really think I did. <laughs> Listen, I don't know about that rumor, but uh, that door is talking to me and I think I have to head out that in that direction. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get the idea? All right. How do you feel about doing that yourself? All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. What you're going to do, you're gonna, it, the people that are facing this wall are gonna start by saying something on your list about yourself or something that you like. And the person facing you is going to say something from the first, the first one on the list, then you'll do the second the same way, and the third. And after you've done three of them, you'll switch roles. You get it? Now, what do you do if a person giggles their head off and can't be realistic in this because I want you to coach I want you to work realistically it's no good if you if you don't deal with it as if it's life say to the person good let's do it again but if they get it right and handled it without upsetting you or or creating a problem do it gently but then somehow change the subject say well handled or good let's go on got it any questions Okay, start. Let's try it. I'll show you. So let's take a look at the invite list where you feel good when you're with that person under those chronic habitual characteristics. 
whatever goes on between you and that other person feels good. It's also, these are also characteristics you want to adopt as much as possible. Because most of you have the purpose of having, not only feeling good yourself, but having, making a difference in other people's lives, right? Not if that's true for you. These characteristics are ones that if you find you'd like to improve some of them in your own mind, in your own ability to apply them. Two or three chapters or two or three steps in this course will help you to release anything that might be holding those good feelings down. I have a problem. I have trouble waking up in the morning even though I have an alarm clock. I just sleep right through it. I think that you should probably go to sleep a little bit earlier and then that can, that can definitely resolve your problem and you can wake up nice and refreshed, start your day early, and then you'll have amazing time spent and then you'll feel accomplished throughout the day. Wow, what a great idea. I, but what about me watching my late night show? Well, you can always record them and then you can always watch them a little later. That is such a positive solution, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna come to you for any other problems I have. Great, no really good handling. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. This is seeks betterment, some improvement, okay? Actually, it's very simple, it's very similar to solutions, isn't it, in a way? All right, let's see. Okay, you tell me something about you and I will invite your, or encourage you. All right, go ahead. I can't seem to do better at the gym. I'm, I'm having a lack of energy. I wake up every day. I feel like uh, I'm not getting my, my day accomplished. I get, I get home. I want to work out, and I just don't have the rigor to do it anymore. I just, I've given up. Wow, this is a bigger problem than I had thought we were going to deal with. But, you know, I've had that myself. You're a very good problem solver. You just solved some problems for me. Tell me one thing you could do to just change a little something. I think, uh, as far as the solution, or you're saying Just right. tell me what, one, what idea you might have that could just make a tiny improvement in that condition. I think probably my, uh, I think diet plays a lot, a, a lot into what I do. If I eat properly, I think that I will see the energy that I need at the gym. That's a very smart idea, don't you agree? Good, go for it, and then give me some feedback on how well you're doing. I'm very interested. Sure. Good, how did that feel? Yes. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. it was great. <laughs> Face each other and do one or two examples each way. Pick one that you like, tell the person your idea, and have him encourage it, or demonstrate one of those positive characteristics. All right, how are you doing? I want to hear from you, how are you doing? Good. Did, we, I know we didn't have time to go through all of it, and it would be great fun with you, each one of you, to experience all of it with you. You're really wonderful to work with. But we have a time limit, and I just want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, as you go through the 10-part course, you will get more and more tools that are personally for you, and then, once you know how, how to avoid or invite people, you have a list of networking folks in the book that will match what you want and need. And that's part of the course. And then, after that, you'll know how to apply. There are over 2,000 careers listed. You'll, I hope, 
and that's my goal even in the short workshop, feel a little bit better about saying, you know, my skills would be fine for any one of these 2,000, but I would prefer these 200 more than that. It leans more toward me. So at the end, you will feel not only have you found more about yourself, more confidence within yourself, but knowing how to choose those individuals that will support that and how to avoid without making upset those that won't. And in the end, it won't be about a job, it'll be about a lifetime career that you're interested in, that you never stop having fun expanding in. And I hope, how many of you feel a little bit closer to that than you did when you first walked in the door? A little bit. Okay, that's my goal. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure meeting you and knowing you.